The Lord be with you. We welcome you to worship here at Papacia Presbyterian Church this morning. It's good to be gathering for worship with you. Especially we welcome any who might be visiting with us today. We count your presence here, one of God's blessings to us. I hope that you'll take time as a part of our worship service to share with us your presence here. You could do that by emailing us. Our email addresses are found on the portal where you're seeing this service or on our church website, or by sending us directly an email, john at pomacea.org. We appreciate your engagement and your sharing and dialogue. That's a part of our experience in the service as well. Thank you for being here with us. This is the first Sunday in October, and the first Sunday in October has for decades been World Communion Sunday. We're sharing in the sacrament of the Lord's table with Christian churches around the world today. Today, we're sharing though in the midst of a pandemic, and in this season, the officers of the church have offered the sacrament virtually to those who will share as well. So if you would care to take part with us today, I advise you to be sure to take a moment to gather your bread and your juice, the wine, the elements that you might use in the sacrament today, as we will invite you to the table when we come to that point in the service. All who seek to follow Jesus Christ are welcome to share in the meal today. As the psalmist says, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us be called to worship. Gather us in. The lost and the lowly, the broken and breaking, the tired and the aching, who long for nourishment found at your feast. Gather us in. The done and the doubting, the wishing and wondering, the puzzled and pondering, who long for the company found at your feast. Gather us in the proud and pretentious, the sure and superior, the never inferior, who long for the leveling found at your feast. Gather us in. The bright and the bustling, the stirrers and shakers, the kind laughter makers, who long for the deeper joys found at your feast. Gather us in. From corner or limelight, from mansion or campsite, from fears and obsession, from tears and depression, from untold excesses, from treasured successes, to meet, to eat, to be given a seat, to be joined to the vine, to be offered new wine, become like the least, be found at your feast. Gather us in around your holy table, O Lord, to worship and adore you. Let us join our hearts and minds in prayer. Holy God, we thank you and are humbled by the breadth and the depth of your generous welcome. May we receive the fullness of such generosity that we may live lives reflecting your abundance. 
We pray in the name of the one who welcomes sinners, Jesus the Christ. Amen. We say that we are without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is merciful and just, will restore us into all righteousness. Before God and one another, let us share in the prayer of confession. Almighty God, maker of all things, have mercy on us. Jesus Christ, redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. Holy Spirit, giver of life, have mercy on us. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, 
so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Friends, the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. Hear and receive the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we have been forgiven in Christ, let us extend the peace of Christ with one another. May the peace of Christ be with you. May the peace of Christ be with you. The peace of Christ be with you. As we turn to the reading of God's word, let us pray. Through the work of your Holy Spirit, O God, Open our hearts and our minds to hear and to receive the gift of your word for us this day with joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The gospel reading for this morning comes from the 26th chapter, the Gospel of Matthew. Hear now God's holy word. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom." When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now invite the children to come and draw near for a special message with Pastor John. Boys and girls, welcome. It makes church better for us when you're here. Thank you for being a part of church today. We're gathered around the communion table today. We're sharing together in the family meal. And this meal has different names. Sometimes it's called communion. Sometimes it's called the Lord's Supper. Sometimes you'll hear the word Eucharist, which means Thanksgiving connected with it. Sometimes you'll hear the word sacrament, a holy moment, used to describe this table. But it's a family table. That's why we have the stole that some of the children made on the table as a way of saying we're glad that children also are a part of this meal. Jesus gave us this meal the week that he was in Jerusalem, the same week when he was arrested, the same week when he was crucified and died, the same week that ended with his rising from the dead, that's the week in which he gave us this meal. They were celebrating together, Jesus and his friends and the disciples, a special meal that all of Israel shared called Passover. At Passover, they remembered 
the mighty acts that God had brought to them. And it was at that Passover meal where Jesus was in a room with his friends that he said, from now on, even after I'm gone, even after I've gone to be with God, continue to share in this family meal. I'll be with you when you share it. And Jesus took bread and he blessed it and broke it. The Bible says Jesus asked a blessing at this table. And you know about blessings. I bet that some of you share the blessing, God is great, God is good. Let us thank him for our food or for health and strength and daily food. We give thee thanks, O Lord. When we ask a blessing before the meal, we remember how Jesus did that too. On this day, we're celebrating the family meal with Christians around the world. That's why there's bread from different countries here today. Cuban bread from Tampa, bread from Latin America, bread that we usually have here at the table, bread from Europe, bread from all different countries in the world. It's a way of our sharing and remembering and being glad that we share this meal, not just with the people in this church, <clears throat> but in all of Christ's family around the world. <clears throat> Let's pray together. God, thank you for giving us this meal. We are happy when we can share together in it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now it is time for sharing in the offering together, and I'm grateful for the continued and faithful support that so many of you have brought persistently across this pandemic. I thank you for the gifts you've sent in through the mail and online. It sustains the worship of this church and also our compassionate outreach and the faith formation programs of this church. We continue to be blessed by your offerings. And at this time, we also lift up our intentional gifts with our talents and our time in the week ahead, even as we gather and give thanks at the Lord's table. In addition to that ongoing faithful sustaining offering, we're receiving a special offering in this season, the peacemaking offering. And the Witness and Service Committee of our church has asked that the offering be used this year to help those who have been hurt by the fires out west and by the hurricanes in the Gulf states, especially Hurricane Sally in particular. And so we're receiving the offering as you send it. You can simply designate it um, peacemaking offering, and we'll use it to help those who have lost their homes, and some of them have lost lives as a part of the fires and the hurricanes. Let us pray now over the offering. Oh God, with glad and generous hearts you make us your family. Now give us the spirit of Christ's generosity that as we enter into the week ahead, we might be instruments of his grace in all of the world. In his name we pray, amen.
The second scripture reading this morning comes from the letter to the Philippians. We've been reading through Philippians in this season as the epistle reading, and the reading this morning comes from the third chapter. It's verses 7 through 14, but I want to begin reading with verse 10. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death. If somehow I may obtain the resurrection from the dead, not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. One of the things about the pandemic that's been difficult, and there's been lots of things about the pandemic that has been difficult, but one of the things has been the way in which it's been hard to share meals together. Certainly in some of our families and in marriages and in some gatherings, increasingly, people have been able, uh, using uh, distancing, to share meals together, but not like we used to. The fellowship dinners on Wednesday nights that have a history of over 50 years in this congregation, it's the first fall that I remember that we haven't been able to share in them. And I know you have meals as well that you've loved that you miss right now. When something is taken from us, the joy of it is accentuated by its absence often, and that's been true for me in the gathering of fellowship meals. I was talking with one of my family members this week about a meal that they were able to go to with their spouse's extended family. I got to hear who was there, and the entree that they shared, the ambiance of the room. I got to hear just a story of a wonderful meal, and it made me think of a question. I'm going to ask the question to you now, and I, I want you to think of an answer. Try and get a particular image in your head. You ready? What's the best meal that you've ever eaten? Think about it. See if you can come up with at least a contender. Even if you don't have the best meal you've ever eaten, come up with several nominations. Have you got one of those now in your head? That meal, what made it so special? Was it the food? Was it the menu? Or was it the people and the conversation and the relationships around it? I remember a meal that Essie Avery with Sally Kofer served Emily and Bill Wallace and Elaine with me once. They had both of us together as couples, and they had prepared this meal after their husbands had died. Uh, Sally was married to Bob Kofer, a well-known psychiatrist in this community, and Essie was married to Dr. Avery, a well-known veterinarian here in Tampa. And they wanted to do a meal together and invited uh, the four of us over. What a great meal that was at Christmas time. How much work they put into it. They had asked us ahead of time what we liked to eat. They had made special foods for the season. They had special drinks and beverages there together. I remember the accents on the table because it was Christmas. And the conversations and the stories that we told around the meal afterwards and the laughter. Today we're gathered around the Lord's Supper, a holy meal, a sacred meal. Why is this meal holy? Why is it so special for us? In this pandemic, we've had changes around the way we share in the meal, and those changes have forced an examination of how we are to celebrate this meal and what's essential about it. I know I've been celebrating this meal as a pastor for 40 years, and I've done a lot of introspection in this period, at least as much as I've done before as to what makes it holy. Is it the identifying way in which we're marked as God's family in it? Because I think that's what's happening in this meal. When we gather around it, we're 
marking ourselves, we're claiming through the invitation our identity as members of Christ's family. Isn't that a part of what marks a family, those who share a meal together? This meal is holy also because Jesus gave it to us, the family leader. We think of the cross often as the central sign of the Christian faith, but when Jesus wanted to give us a specific sign to remember him by, the Gospels are clear, he gave us this meal, a family meal, and said, when you eat this meal together, you remember me. One of my professors said, the sacrament of communion was like the difference between the vows of citizenship that one takes when you become a citizen versus the Pledge of Allegiance. The sacrament of baptism was the mark of citizenship, but the sacrament of the Lord's Supper was the continuing act, like the Pledge of Allegiance, that you could repeat again and again as a mark of your participation in the values of the family system. A part of what makes this meal holy for us as well is the way it draws us together. It's an inclusive meal. All who seek to draw close to Jesus Christ are welcome at this meal. And because Jesus is the host of the meal, he invites all who want to come close to him, not those that we like or those that we would invite, but those that Jesus invites. Today, this is especially visible because we're celebrating in the sacrament with the church around the world on the same Sunday, and we're gathering and marking that with all the different breads at the table. We mark that also in the way in which in this meal we serve one another. Together in the meal, as we serve one another, we're acting out the paradigm of Christ's love, even as he served his friends and his disciples and us. And also in this meal, we're remembering, intentionally. We're remembering Jesus. That's why so many communion tables have as the inscription on the front, the words of Jesus, when you do this, you remember me, or this do in remembrance of me. The words of institution themselves that we speak at the table call us to remember. And here we remember the life of Jesus, his teaching, his healing, his death on the cross, the forgiveness of sins, his resurrection. Meals are a time to remember. So Matthew shares his memory of the Lord's Supper with us. And as he does, he puts it in the context of Passover, the meal that the disciples shared with Israel. He says that as they were gathering together to celebrate Passover, Jesus wanted to share it with them the way in which you might want to share uh, Thanksgiving with particular friends and family members. It served as a device, a device for remembering the mighty acts of God's faithfulness, which are recorded in the books of Exodus. Here, as we gather at this meal, we remember God's faithfulness also. History is a part of what makes the meal holy, the shared history that we have together and laughter and joy. I think that they are a part of what should be remembered at the meal as well. It's the joy that's given to us in the Christian faith, in the love of Christ. Isn't it true that a part of what happens at family meals is sharing stories around the table as an act of remembering? And often stories that you've heard before, familiar stories, and a lot of the joy comes in being able to anticipate where the laughter is going to come in this story. We're learning our family identity that that way. Thanksgiving itself is a part of what makes this a holy meal. One of the names Eucharist even means Thanksgiving. The prayer at the heart of the meal is the prayer of Thanksgiving for God's acts of faithfulness with us. So this meal reframes us as a people towards gratitude. It renews us. It restores us, and here we know the immediacy of the stress and the challenges and the disappointment that we often bring to the table. They can obscure the longer, truthful narrative of how in our lives God has been faithful and sustaining and present, blessing us over time. The meal helps us to recall and be aware of that larger context 
And the function of the meal is to reshape us that way, to renew us, to go out as God's agents into the world around us. Identity, gratitude, and purpose, they come together at this meal. One of the communion hymns says, Here, O Lord, we see thee face to face. Here we remember the character and person of Jesus Christ and take that with us out into our own living in the world. The central preoccupation of the Christian community with the Lord's Supper over time, the sacrament, has been the way in which Christ is present in the elements, trying to understand in words and in doctrine how Christ is present in the bread and in the cup, precisely how Christ has been present with us there. Not just in this pandemic, but over the journey of my ministry, I found myself focusing less on that and more on how Christ is present with us in the invitation, how Christ is present with us in the blessing, how Christ is present with us in the sharing, how Christ is present with us in the gathering of us together. The presence of Christ is profoundly with us in those elements as well. That's a part of what Matthew and the other gospels remember when they share the story of this meal too. This is a holy meal because of the way it gives us our identity as God's people. Now I want to ask you a question about meals as you go out into the world in the month ahead. One of the truths about meals is that they're not always feasts of love, are they? Sometimes meals are feasts of hate. Isn't that your experience, right? You've known meals that have been marked by contentiousness, by anger, by meanness, meals that have been marked by the presence of embarrassment or shame. That also is a part of the human experience. This is meant to be a feast of love that focuses us as people as love. Ask yourself in the month ahead, especially in the month ahead, are the meals that you're gathering around, whether you're eating alone or with others, whether you're eating in person or virtually, are the meals that you're gathering around feasts of love or are they feasts of hate? Are they meals where you're gaining your identity by visiting together who you hate together, by sharing in your conversations who it is that you're angry at, by stirring up those kinds of passions of violence? Or are they meals that bring you to remember the Prince of Love? Are they meals that cause you to identify again as people who act in the character of Christ? Are they meals that send you out into the world as agents of Christ's beloved? Remember, love is a great strength in the world. Don't be fooled into thinking that love is a sign of weakness and hate is a sign of strength. Love is the strongest force in the universe. That's a part of what God has shown us in the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The strength and the power of God's love. That is part of the message of the Feast of Love. The meals that you eat together this month, are they feasts of hate or feasts of love? Jesus Christ is the host of this meal. All who seek to follow him are invited to gather around it together. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They shall come from east and west and north and south to sit at table in the kingdom of God. This is the Lord's table, and our Savior invites all those who trust and believe in him to share in this feast that he has prepared. Let us pray. Holy God, creator of the universe, with joy we praise you and give you thanks. You brought light from darkness. You drew land from the sea. You made us in your image to live with one another. You promised yourself in covenant with us. You told us your purpose in your law and called for justice through the prophets. Through long generations, you have been faithful to your people. 
We praise you, most holy God, for the gift of your son, Jesus. He told your story, healed the sick, and welcomed the stranger. Obeying you, he took up his cross and died that we might live. Rising from the dead, he overcame death, the firstborn of the new creation. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we break bread and share one cup, giving thanks for your saving love in Jesus Christ, and offering ourselves to live for him in joy and grateful praise. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine. Make them the body and blood of Christ, that we may be his body for the world. By your Spirit, make us one with him and one another. Send us out to live for others as Christ lived for us, and keep us faithful until we feast with him in glory. All thanks and praise to you, O triune God, now and forever. Now, with the confidence of the people of God, we pray as Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night of his arrest, Jesus was sitting at table with the disciples. And after the meal, he took the bread, gave thanks to God, and broke it, giving it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. Drink you all of it. Friends, every time we eat this bread and we drink from this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Whether you are partaking of the sacrament through the own physical elements in your own home, or whether you are participating in this meal in prayer and contemplation, you are invited to taste and see that the Lord is good. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for the gift of this meal. Having been fed through your word and through your sacrament, we ask that you would send us out into your world, loving and sharing in your grace and in your mercy with all that we meet. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Now the service has come to an end. What do you say after a wonderful meal? Thank you. Can I help with the dishes? That was wonderful. Be careful driving home. The peace of Christ be with you. As you've gathered around this table, you've made a witness, a witness to the love of God that gives us an identity as Christ's family. Now go into the world and make that witness with your lives. And may the love of God the Father Almighty and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit guide and be with us all. Amen.